Hi, my name is Cynthia Pedraza and I welcome you to this course about the eight limbs of yoga. This course is appropriate for teachers who want to present this content to their students and also for that student with what's to find depth in their knowledge. Make sure you have a journal, a pen, and perhaps a nice cushion or meditation pillow in order for you to sit with a long spine. Before we begin this course, I'm going to invite you to close your eyes for a moment. Relax your body. Take a deep breath in through both nostrils. Open the mouth and release any tension holding in your body. And very slowly reopen your eyes, perhaps with more presence in the room. So the eight limbs of yoga. The texts where they come from is known as the Yoga Sutras. And it's very important before we begin tapping into these eight limbs to understand what's the origin of them. So these um, texts, Yoga Sutras, probably written over 1500 years ago. The author of these copulation of texts is known as Patanjali. Patanjali was a sage who was dedicated to share divine knowledge. And there's not too much information about Patanjali, but we for sure know that he was the one who gathered all these yoga texts and put them together in a compilation for us to understand yoga from different perspectives. Patanjali also knew that this information was really important for those who were seeking the path of well-being. But he didn't really take too much credit about it. He was just fully committed to share the gifts that yoga had to offer for us. They were greeted for that person who was completely dedicated to the spiritual development. So we have to, to be and to become aware that this information comes from years ago and that the beliefs or the system beliefs back in the days were completely different than what we are familiar now with. So in this course, the invitation is for you to take little pieces of nuggets from these teachings and then apply them to your modern life. And with this being said, uh, another thing that I want you to consider is that when I mention words like God or divine, make sure that you associate these words with your own personal beliefs. So the Yoga Sutras, um, we find 195. And the word sutra comes from the word to solder, so to stitch. So these, these uh, yoga sutras that you're going to find in, in texts or books are very small but full of knowledge. It's like these two, three, four sentences where Patanjali um, created all this content for us to digest through the practice. These yoga sutras were meant for us to find self-study, personal self-study with the purpose to find a better life. And these Yoga Sutras were divided in four. We call the four, four padas. Padas meaning foot, like padangushtasan. We have Samadhi Pada, Satna Pada, Buddhi Pada, and Kaivilya Pada. That means oneness. So it's kind of these four chapters where all these 195 sutras um, emerge. The first time yoga was organized in form of a text was when Patanjali gathered this information and named them the Yoga Sutras. And Patanjali says we should focus on getting rid of the suffering and getting rid of those obstacles in our life that are gonna um, get on our way in order for us to find purpose or to find blissfulness in our life. 
Another thing that Patanjali says is if yoga is the goal, if yoga is the goal, let's understand what the meaning of yoga is. As you know, there are several meanings of the word yoga. But the yoga with the big Y, the yoga according to Patanjali, comes from Yoga Sutra 1.2. Yoga Chitta Vritti Niroda. And this refers as yoga is the stealing of the turning of the mind. So it's how can we calm our thoughts in order for us to find silence within? And then that reveals the true knowledge. Living our yoga of the mat is one of the intentions of this eight limb path. So now in the Western, we are very familiar with yoga related to asana. But let's just explore this concept since asana is actually the third step from these eight uh, limbs of yoga. And we will develop and explore that through this course. Why, why am I presenting this information to you? It's very simple. It all resumes to we all want to live well. We all want to have a good quality of life. And this course will come in a form of a sadhana. Sadhana means our spiritual practice. Once again, when I refer to spiritual, it depends on the belief system that you have. But just know that sadhana is coming, unfolding our mat, and presents ourselves to understand and get better knowledge for a better quality of life. Well, let's go ahead and start unfolding this eight limb path of yoga that Patanjali created for us. These eight limbs, these eight steps are formed by different concepts such as yamas, which refers to restraints and limits, is how do we manage from our perspective the outside world and our relationship with the outside world. These yamas contain five different concepts that are going to help us develop this relationship with the world. The second limb of yoga refers to niyamas. And niyamas are observances. So now we talked about yamas being with the external world. Niyamas invites us to dive in. It's our relationship with ourself. And again, in the niyamas, we're going to find five concepts that are going to help us to get to that internal or realization. The third step we talked about previously is asana. Asana refers to the physical aspect of the practice known as these poses of yoga. After this third step, we have pranayam. Pranayam meaning the breath work. And it's going to be really interesting how these eight limbs start, just as he suggested in the Yoga Sutras, they just start finding a correlation in between them. After uh, pranayama, we find pratyahara. Pratyahara refers to withdraw the senses. How can we bring our attention to this specific moment by learning and practicing how to get rid layer by layer from distractions from the external world. After this uh, releasing of distractions, then we're going to practice dharana. And dharana invites us to find concentration. We will, and I will talk in this course about different ways to practice concentration and then merge that with the previous uh, limb of yoga that allowing the distractions of the mind to get away through concentration. And after that, you will find dhyana. And dhyana is meditation. So actually, the purpose of why we sit, we sit in stillness, and we do the third limb known as asana, it all comes and resumes to get into this stillness of the mind. So if we remember Patanjali's definition of yoga is that yoga is the stealing of the turning of the mind. 
And meditation is the way to find that stillness of the mind. And the final limb of yoga, it's known as samadhi. And samadhi is the state of unity, is that wholeness, is once we integrated yamas, niyamas, asana, pranayama, pratyahara, dharana, dhyana, we come to this state of wholeness or unity known as samadhi. To conclude this intro, just remember that the teachings are here to help you unfold your own path, your own personal path of self-realization, and that each part of this course supports the next one. So if you find yourself um, needing to stop the video at any moment or to review the previous video, take your time. Take time to digest this information that is going to be presented to you in the most digestible way possible. Um, and know that at the end, each limb that, I, that I'm going to present to you is going to offer you a space of reflection at the end. I can't wait to share the teachings that are here to walk us to live a well-lived life. Amorilus, namaste.